Let's talk about periods. Let's talk about the menstrual cycle. It affects 50% of the population in some way or another. And if it doesn't affect you directly, I'm sure you know someone who it does affect. But for those of us who it does affect, oh boy, do we know the struggles. But have you ever thought about how your menstrual cycle can affect your training or your racing or your performance? And have you ever thought about planning your training around your menstrual cycle? Well, if you haven't, listen up, because you might want to change the way you've been doing things. Today, I'm going to be chatting to Hannah Barnes, former pro and now coach for Synergy, a female coaching company that are optimising training around female physiology. It was never really spoken about or a topic that we spoke about. Yeah, and that's something that I guess when I was racing as well, I it seems so stupid again looking yeah. back and you're like, why didn't why didn't we? I think a lot more people are feeling comfortable about talking about it like it's natural. I'm gonna be finding out about her experiences and how she's helping females navigate through their cycles and hopefully a few tips that you guys can take home too. Coming from a professional sporting background, I know firsthand how hard it can be trying to navigate your cycle on race day or your period just falling on the wrong day. And it's really hard when you know full well so all you want to do is get into bed with a hot water bottle. But unfortunately, race day can't change. And throughout my cycling career, I never once considered my cycle into my training. Was I missing a trick? Before we find out, it's important for us to understand our menstrual cycle. So here's a quick explainer. The menstrual cycle has four phases. Menstruation, the follicular phase, ovulation and the luteal phase. A typical cycle can be anywhere from 21 to 40 days, with a global average being around 28 days long. The menstrual is the first stage of the cycle and it's also when you get your period and it can last anywhere from two to seven days. This phase starts when an egg from the previous cycle isn't fertilised and the hormone levels of oestrogen and progesterone start to drop. You may have period symptoms like cramps, tender boobs, bloating, mood swings, headaches and a sore back. And the follicular phase starts on the first day of your period and it can last for 13 to 14 days ending in ovulation. During this phase, your reproductive hormones start to rise in preparation for ovulation. You might notice higher energy levels and it's common to feel quite optimistic and energized in this phase. Phase three is the ovulation phase and rising estrogen levels during the follicular phase trigger your pituitary gland to release luteinizing hormones. This is what starts the ovulation process. You can sometimes tell the ovulating by having symptoms like a slight rise in your body temperature. And ovulation happens around day 14 if you do have a 28 day cycle. Phase four is the luteal phase. And during this phase, your body is preparing itself for a new cycle. So your energy levels may fall as your hormone production begins. Some signs that you're in the luteal phase of your cycle may include things like mood changes, tender boobs, bloating, or you could have some breakout or acne. Hannah, thank you so much for joining us today. Okay. But first of all, I want to start with, I guess, your career, because you've recently re retired. Mm. But was the menstrual cycle something you looked at when you were racing, or did any of your coaches? No, it's actually something I've never really looked at, thought about. Um, I had a few coaches throughout my career, but it was never really spoken about or a topic that we spoke about. Are there any reasons why you don't think it was considered? Uh, I don't know. I think it was just kind of like something that you just... You had to deal with so you never really thought about it was it something that you know you and your teammates spoke about at all or was it kind of like a shush shush subject um towards the end of my career I would say yes like going into races kind of be the topic if especially um when I was on Kenyan SRAM um a lot of the riders were a lot older so we felt comfortable talking about that and discussing it and sometimes going into team talks and talking about the race we would be open if someone was in their period that time or so it was like feeling good or bad or was at a stage when they just didn't feel great then we maybe change the roles a little bit more and their role will be a bit earlier than planned. What training should you be doing when? So when you're on your period so the follicular stage um, is when you should just do those hard efforts. Um, go to the gym just do really intense short efforts and then like when you're on your ovulation you 
is very dependent on who you are. Um, you could either be going really well or yeah, you're not feeling as good. Um, and then coming into your luteal stage, the early and the late luteal stage after ovulation, just before your period, your legs will be aching a little bit more. You're not sleeping as well. Um, you're a little bit more flexible, so your joints and everything might be hurting a little bit more as well. So it's... There's a lot to it. Yeah, um, and like, I didn't really think about it before, but now with like the research I've been doing and working with Synergy, I like can see patterns as well in myself. So those athletes that you are coaching, what differences have they, no have they noticed and you, I guess, from really looking into their menstrual cycle? I think it's just the, the reassurance that if you do a bad training session, don't worry about it because maybe in two or three days time, it's going to be, you do the same session again and it'll be great. So yeah. it's more just like not looking into it too much, just getting back from training, closing the door and just kind of moving on and forgetting about it. Obviously not every rider will, you know, have a natural cycle. Some choose to be on the pill. How do you go about dealing with that in the training? Is there any difference? Uh, actually, the pill, um, if you're riding and you're on the pill, it's it's actually a lot more important to track it and try and find a pattern because okay. it's not as predictable as if you're just in a natural cycle. So, um, yeah, it's hard because there's not, there's some science to a natural cycle, but when you're on the pill, it's there's not much at all. So, um, yeah, it's actually a little bit more unpredictable. I remember when I first started, started riding, I first joined, um, like a big program. I remember like sitting down, all of us girls in a room, and someone basically said to us, um, "We advise you to go on the pill because it's you know super annoying to have your period. Yeah. So just like get out of the way. But it is super important to have your period at the end of the day, and it is something that we ha all have to deal with. We're in a weird stage at the moment where some athletes and some female athletes think that if you get your period, then you're not like a true athlete." Um, which blows my mind, like there's life before cycling or any sport. And if you want to have a family and you haven't had your period for, for years, then it's yeah. going to be hard to do that. So like I've had in the past teammates, they'd be like, you get your period, do you, not f do you feel like an athlete because you get your period? Like they've just thought like, I'm not professional enough. It's and such it's, a bad It's a bad, bad. like especially with it. younger riders and the young generation coming into the sport, you need it, you need to normalise how would you like to see the conversation in women's cycling, menstrual cycle go forward? How do you think we go about talking about it more, being more open about it and not it being this taboo subject that everybody's a little bit scared of? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just about making sure people are more comfortable to talk about it. It's, um, it's natural. So it is it's something that everyone's going to have to go through. You're in a peloton with 120 women. There's a lot of riders there that go through the exact same thing as, as you. So yeah, just like having that, if you're starting with a new coach or a new team, just like the first conversations can be about that. And then it's it's normal within those conversations yeah. and just having coaches feeling comfortable about it as well. So yeah, just, I don't think it's about like the confidence and being comfortable talking about the menstrual cycle. It's just kind of like making it normal to yeah. just talk about it, like not making it a, a big topic. It's just should be like a normal topic yeah, throughout the sport. Well, thank you very much for taking the time and coming to chat to us today. And you've got a very busy schedule. So thank you. It's okay. It was really interesting and insightful to hear from Hannah. And it's great to know that it's starting to be spoken about a lot more in the pro cycling world. But next up, I wanted to hear more on the topic. Will Harper is the founder of Synergy, a former pro and now also a coach. What has female training looked like in the past? Has it been a copy and paste of essentially what a male training program would look like? I think sadly that that probably has been the case in um, in most circumstances. I would say almost invariably the, the, the women that we've worked with on in both both coaching companies have have historically followed a three on one off three on one off um, in terms of three weeks on one week off or, or even three days on one day off regardless of where they are uh, in their in their menstrual cycle there, there is nobody who we have worked with who who has come to us and said i've actually got this totally nailed and my last coach uh, is really optimizing everything around my the natural ebbs and flows of how i feel over the month what has shocked you the most when you know you've been learning about the menstrual cycle and how it can affect you know your training and your racing 
I think the single thing which which really surprised me uh, when I you know when I was starting to consume all the information I could about this sort of thing um, six or so years ago was actually the fact that that when women are bleeding they can actually be feeling amazing it's a low hormone phase so their bodies are receptive to high training loads they're recovering well they can access store car- carbohydrate more uh, more readily and actually some some amazing performances and some power pbs are quite often seen when women are bleeding and that seems counterintuitive to me i would have said that that's surely not the case obviously there are complications if you have um you know, an unusually heavy amounts of bleeding. And that is, of course, something that that, that needs to be addressed. But generally, th- th- that your physiology is predisposed to um, strong performances into heavy training loads at that time, I found really, really surprising. What do you think we're going to see from the female side? Do you think a lot more women are going to, you know, get on this? Because I bet there's a lot of, you know, even pro riders that aren't, you aren't, figuring out how to train best mm. around the men- menstrual cycle. Do you think this is going to catch on quickly? And because we mm. have essentially been missing a trick for a very long time. I really hope it does. I think there's probably a bit of disconnect between how this stuff's been spoken about and how it's been interpreted by by the female pros. I think they, or some of them at least, might have the understanding that that, that tracking your cycle means that you're almost putting performance secondary to to this more holistic approach but actually the opposite is true the total opposite is true it doesn't if you track your cycle it does not mean you're going to be going any easier in fact you're probably going to be going harder you're just going to be going hard at the right times thank you very much for chatting to us today will thanks so much for having me it was great to hear what will had to say and some great tips for any other coaches that want to approach this topic with their athletes Debatably, female athletes should be given way more credit than they are given. The fact that they turn up to races, perform at a really high level whilst at different phases of their cycle is pretty amazing. But not only sportswomen, all women, just getting on with their day whilst being sometimes in a lot of pain is amazing. But let me know what you thought of this video down in the comment section below. We're also hoping to do another video touching on women's sexual health and cycling. So if you have any questions that you want to know on that topic, leave them in the comment section and I'll try my best to find the answer to them.